Welcome to Rhythm Timeline 2. In this video tutorial, we're going to have a look at the Osu demo scene and we're going to see how it's set up. So first thing we're going to do is press play. So we can actually test this out. So over there, we got our two songs that we can play. I'm just going to select one of them and we can see as soon as the song starts, but we've got our little rings are scaling and then as soon as they reach the correct spot we can press and release and we get the, the scores right and all of these are set up to display at the position that we want we've got those curves we've got different colors etc let me just finish this song really quickly boom 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 this is really hard I'm really bad at those games. Right? Hopefully it gives you a little bit of context of how this plays out. We got also this ping pong effect. We have to go back. Oh my god, I'm so bad. Getting so many misses. I don't know if you noticed, but the, the ordering of all those notes right here, you see how it always goes on top of each other? This is all set up inside the notes. So we'll have a look at how this works. If you don't want to watch me play, you can just skip to the end. There you go, it's done. Can clear it, we've got a score or high score, etc. So let's get out of play mode and we're going to see how this was set up. The so first thing we want to select our director, we can lock the scene. At this point, I assume you're already familiar with how the rhythm director works and how the timeline works. If you haven't seen the first video tutorial, make sure to watch that one before coming here. Um, so, how do we set up those notes? It's actually a very clever idea is when we have those notes over here, those clips, we've got some parameters on the right. And those parameters, we've used the vector two parameter to set the position of our notes. So we've got four tracks. Each track is a color. So the first track is green. The second is yellow, I believe. No, the second is. Yes, the second is red. The second is red. The fourth one is yellow. And this one is blue. And we've got our notes over here, which are our spline notes. So how do we how do we move those notes around? Over here inside our scene. And if we go over here and select our notes, you'll notice we've got a little handle over here. Very very useful handle. Uh, if you click on it and you move around, notice how this vector 2 changes. And just like that, we can change our values very neatly. So we can place them around, we can place them close, away. Notice how we got a, a 1 over here, and then we got a 2, and then we got a 3. This is all automatically set up such that um, if, let's say, my three uh, disposition I want it to be first, then I'll just move them around. And now this will be first, one, two, three. And um, if we go too far to the right, so let's say we've got uh, over here my number one, and we'll move this away to the right, then this will become one because we actually uh, set the values automatically to be such that it only follows the values. Um, by sequences inside the same track until it gets interrupted by another track. So uh, this is all set up inside the tap note uh, for Osu. And now we've seen how to, to move those around, but what about those splines? Because those splines are slightly different. So if we click on our hold notes, we'll notice over here 
we've got our vector 2 just like before but we also got some extra data osu spline node rhythm clip extra data and what does this have it has a lot of control points but changing those control points manually is, is a nightmare right because we've got tangents position etc so we don't want to change that uh, and all we have here is just our handle for for that note and um, the way i've set this up is to be as um, as simple as possible let's say such that we're going to use this spline over there which was made with the package the 2d sprite shape package uh, and i'm going to use those tools to move this around so if i click on it we'll find a very neat select note over here that's going to select our note inside the scene if your note just disappears it's probably because you haven't locked your timeline so another reminder to always lock your timeline let's go back select note it's now selected and you'll notice this edit spline button so you press that spline button and now you can move this around and just like that it's that easy you can move things to the uh, to the point you want things might not update automatically but that's fine uh, let me just put the game view because this is actually quite useful to see what we're actually doing. We can move this around over there, move this, we can add new points if we want to, move the tangent, etc. But one thing you'll notice is that I've disabled um, being able to move the, uh, the normal point. And that's because I wanted to make sure that we only move the original point from this over here. So now we've got our, our little thing that's working. And we can notice how even if I scroll, it just works. And I can create new ones, etc. So now that we've seen how to create all of these, um, you get a good understanding of how to set up your own tap notes. But we're going to have a look at these in more detail. So let's have a look at our prefabs. Or rather our notes we're gonna have osu tap so how was osu tap set up we've got our osu tap notes component over here and we've got uh it's set up to update over the timeline we've set up all of these things that we want we've got our outline so the outline is actually the timing outline it's actually the the circle over here this one that is going to be scaled up and down to reach this thing. We've set it up um, with those values to say this is the size it should have to be exactly the perfect time. So we just scale it down. Uh, over there, we copied this value and we've placed it over there. And then we can change the speed at which it's being resized over there. And we've got our visuals. So the visuals is where we've got the, the text, for example, that is getting automatically set. We can choose. This is completely optional. We can also set the color for the tracks. Let's say, for example, this is green, but some of the other ones are being set to blue or red or whatever. And this is actually set up on the track. So if we go back, I'm going to go over here, the game world, tracks. And I go over there. We can see my primary color over there, red blue yellow etc so this is how the colors are being automatically set through the track and then the other interesting part is the sort order because you saw how all the tap notes they get uh, spawned inside the scene and then they get on top of each other or below each other rather and this is all done via this sort order so you actually drag and drop all of your right renders and canvases inside of those lists and then automatically it's going to set the sort order for them so make sure that anything that you want to have a specific sort order uh, inside your your note uh, to be set inside those lists so that they appear in the correct order you can also set the sort layer if you want to for this demo i only have the default layer i haven't used any of the other layers but um, make sure that you do use layers so that uh, you don't draw your App notes in front of the ui for example 
Um, what else do you want to? We've got the collider, of course, be able to, to click on the notes, etc. If you want to add some new effects, then you can put some effects with the note effect uh, event receiver, sorry. And um, so that's tap notes. Let's have a look at spline notes. It's pretty much the same thing, but duplicated. So we've got our start, our end, and then our move. So start point, moving, hold. So this is the, the part that moves as you move your cursor. And then we've got the end point. This is where you're supposed to end. So just like before, we've got our sword canvas and our sword renderers, where you've got a lot more now because we've got a lot of things inside this shape. Um, we also got the, the sprite shape, which is the interesting part over here. So how is that set up? Well, we've got the main shape controller, which is this one inside the, the spline node. This is the one you control via the editor as you move things around through the timeline. Um, and this is being set to other sprite controllers, which are these ones, the fill, which is the green part, and then the outline, which is the black part, right? Outline. And this is done via the shape synchronizer. So this is a simple component. All it does is it takes the um the shape controller data of this one and it sets it up for these ones via the main spline, additional spline. Yeah. And um since we wanted an outline of the here, I set it up so that we can have a size. And if we increase the size, for example, you can see how it becomes bigger and this one becomes smaller, etc. So quick and easy way to set up your splines. Uh, what else is interesting about this component compared to the other one? Uh, we've got whether we want it to be ping pong or not. Uh, as you saw in the demo, I was able to sometimes just drag it once. So go in one way. But if you want to go one way and then back, then this is through this ping pong value over there. This is set up also on the clip. If I cl click this clip over here, you can see I've got ping pong. It's also a data that is per clip, not always inside of the components. And we can set up a little um, icon over here. Very, very nice icon that we can tell the player that this is a ping pong or not. Um, and I think that's pretty much covers it on how this is set up. If you want to create your own, you can just duplicate those prefabs and start moving things around. Um, one thing I haven't explained is that uh, this line that we see over here with a sprite shape uh, uses a sprite shape profile and you can customize it. Just one thing to take into account is that um, this package comes from the Unity uh, default packages that you can install through the package manager uh, and it works great for our use case but it does not really support quite well transparent images so if you want a spline that is slightly transparent i would recommend checking for other spline packages that are better for for that, that type of job uh, but in our case um, it it's, does the job just fine, and uh, we're able to do things directly with very simple, very simple tools and packages. Um, I think that's about it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, then make sure to join the Discord, uh, contact me by email, or, or directly in this YouTube uh, comments. Uh, in the next video, we're going to have a look at the VR demo which is a bit more involved as it uh, uses a lot more extra packages. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Bye.